Last year, I launched my first range of products for a business I started based around my dog, Polly. My products ended up being stocked in a branch of local vet shops located in the Western Cape. In this video, I'm going to take you through my step-by-step -step process on how I managed to do this, the mistakes I made along the way, and what the overall outcome of my product performance was from someone who has never done this before. So let's head on to step one. Step one was identifying a gap in the market. I personally really wanted to create an advent calendar for dogs as I have a huge love for Christmas and obviously I needed the product to be around my dog. So I started doing some research and I noticed that the advent calendars in the South African market were all pretty much the same. They all offered the same treat behind every single door which removed the whole excitement from opening an advent calendar because even though it was for the dogs, the owners were the ones still opening the calendars. This is when I decided I had an opportunity here to create something that both owners and pets could enjoy. Still delivering some good treats for the pets, but keeping that excitement of not knowing what's behind the next door. And this is where the ideation process started to come together. So step two. Step two was trying to identify whether the product would be feasible to create. In order to do this, I needed to locate a supplier to understand what the cost of production would be. So I headed to an online marketplace called Alibaba. If you don't know what Alibaba is, Alibaba provides a digital marketplace where consumers and merchants can connect and buy and sell from one another. The platform includes a large range of supplies specializing in various products which often offer customization. I therefore started searching for advent calendar manufacturers as I wanted to ensure the product would be of high quality. I found an amazing supplier, started chatting with them and got a rough quote of what it would cost to manufacture the advent calendar. However, to get a finalized quote, I would need to send through my design and exact dimensions of the product. Step three was then creating my design. I headed onto Canva and based on the dimensions I discussed with the supplier, I put together my final design and sent it through to them. They then were able to give me a final quotation on what it would cost to manufacture the items. I got a quote for about a thousand boxes and then a quote for 500. It's always good to get a variation of quotes as when ordering bulk the cost of production is lower and that can really help you in terms of your margins of your products. Also to note I had a manufacturer who made sure to include the duty and the shipping fees in the quote so I had a full understanding of what the total cost would be per unit. So step four, which is a very, very important step, is requesting a sample. So I paid to have a sample made from the supplier and they then sent me a video through of the product, how it worked, open the doors to make sure everything was 100% how I wanted it to be. I then also paid to have the sample shipped to me just because I wanted to check it for myself. However, I was very happy with the product and um, once I had it shipped to me, I checked it once more before saying, hey, okay, I'm ready to go. Now on to step five, which was doing a calculation on of what it would cost me to fill each advent calendar. So I had the price, the unit price of shipping the boxes and what that would cost. So then I put together an estimation of what it would cost for me to fill the advent calendars based on the treats I wanted to use. I actually went in store, bought some samples, calculated how many treats I could get out of each box, how which treats I wanted to put in the box and the total cost therefore of each box to fill. So step six was basically identifying how I was going to seal each treat within the box. I had ideated with a few options. I even considered doing plastic, but I ended up deciding to go with foil. I wanted to use a golden foil because I thought it would add a little bit of like glamour to the box and it went with the whole color and scheme of the box. So I found a supplier on Alibaba who manufactured foil and it could cut my foil into the exact size I needed. I didn't want to waste time having the foil sent here, risk damaging some of the foil by trying to cut it. So I requested two quotations initially, and then I had about half the foil shipped to me, so I was able to put together a sample. At this stage, I'd also decided that I wanted to include something special on the last day of the advent calendar for the owner to enjoy. So I decided to go with a key ring. I found a key ring manufacturer on Alibaba who created these little key rings that said, I love dogs. They were just tiny little key rings. I thought were super cute. So I got a quote for those key rings and then added that to my spreadsheet. So at this stage, I now had the cost of each element of my advent calendar. I had the cost of the treats, I had the cost of the advent calendar, I had the cost of the foil, and I had the cost of the key ring. 
after I'd done all the calculations, I was quite excited to identify that the product could actually work. Obviously, it was a lot to invest, but it was something I was truly passionate about and my mindset really was in the sense that I don't want to look back and say what if. So, with all this in mind, after consulting various family members, deciding whether this is something I should do, I decided to go ahead. Headed on to step seven, which was to click the go button. I contacted all the suppliers and placed my orders, made my payment, and it was now or never. <laughs> so obviously it was quite nerve wracking, but it was also very exciting. Just to note, because my advent calendars were a custom design, those were obviously going to take longer to manufacture and those were shipped by Ocean Freight. So they had about lead time of two months, I think two and a half months from manufacturing to arriving at the Durban Harbour where they would then be shipped through to Cape Town where I am based. So I knew the lead time on that, but the rest of the stuff obviously would take about two weeks to get to me, which was amazing but I obviously knew my advent calendars were going to take longer so I needed to take that into consideration. However, this still worked well for me and the timeline I was working on so I was happy to go ahead. However, during this time while I was still waiting for the big bulk of my advent calendars to arrive, I had my sample and I tested the sample, packaging it with the foil around each treat, the keyring in the last door and working out how the whole box would look and feel once packaged. So during this time, I actually noticed an issue. <laughs> so basically what my problem was is that I felt like the treats in the box were moving around too much. They were just covered in foil and then put in these doors. And it just felt like they were shifting around too much, which I wasn't happy with. So it was this stage that I realized I needed to fill something else in the doors around those treats. So I decided to go ahead with tissue paper. I thought this would be a really good option. Obviously now I needed to now calculate this into my price further and see if, we'd, if it could work. But it ended up working out that a manufacturer in Cape Town would end up being more affordable for me. So I went ahead with that, placed the order for the tissue paper in the meantime. However, I also realized that if I was gonna be shipping these boxes to people via post, they could easily get damaged in the post as the advent calendars were made out of a thin cardboard, not a particularly hard cardboard, like a box cardboard. They were, and they were quite thick. So just now they got squashed along the way and it would just be all for nothing. So it was this stage I realized I also needed to get packaging boxes, shipping boxes, I mean. And this was another expense I didn't think about. So it was now on the road to find a supplier who could manufacture me custom sized shipping boxes for my advent calendars. Oh my word, the amount of obstacles. <laughs> but I luckily found this amazing manufacturer who could supply custom sized boxes for me. And I, in the meantime, placed an order for that. I didn't order the total amount I needed to ship all the boxes. I just ordered about 25%. Just to give some idea, I'd ordered a total of a thousand advent calendars from the supplier. Therefore, that's why they needed to be shipped via sea freight. So just to understand, at this stage, I had two extra costs calculated into my spreadsheet, which I previously did not account for. So, but besides this, it still managed to work out and I was excited that the process was going forward. But I will not discount that these obstacles did bring me on a little down at some stage thinking what have I gotten myself into there's so many things I didn't realize that I didn't consider this far in and you know we're not turning back now so let me give you a little bit of insight on what took place in 2022 because this was the year of 2022 which means that my boxes never actually launched as I said it was last year that my boxes launched which means my order never arrived on time from China. So my advent calendar order actually got stuck at the Durban port for over four months, which meant that I missed the whole festive season and had to wait to the following year. As you can imagine, I was quite devastated at this stage. All this hard work I'd put in just felt like it was absolutely for nothing. 
and I was stuck with all the stock that I now needed to store somewhere or get rid of. What was I gonna do? I then did the only thing that I could. I rented a storage room where I stocked my boxes, my advent calendars, my key rings and my foil. Obviously my treats couldn't be stocked, they needed to be donated. So let's fast forward to 2023. Now I know as we get older the years go by so much quicker so before I knew it it was mid 2023 and it was now time to get everything together for the launch in 2023 of my advent calendars which had been sitting in storage for quite some time. So I decided to look at the situation as an opportunity to be fair. In the beginning of the year, I was quite down about it, but I realized, you know what, things happen for a reason and I got to just keep going. Everyone faces obstacles, but the best thing is to just keep on going. And that's what I did. So what I decided to do is get in contact with some of the local vet shops in the area and see if any of them would possibly be interested in stocking my product. I had some connection through family to a vet that worked at one of our local Tigerberg animal vet shops and I eventually contacted her to see if they would be interested and I unfortunately never really heard anything back so it was at this stage that I decided there was only one thing I could do next and that was simply walk into the stores with my presentation my portfolio of my products my products in hand and see if there was someone i could speak to who could put me in contact with the product manager or some sort of head in the tigerberg animal hospital to see if they would be interested in possibly stocking my products so that's exactly what i did i put together a very professional presentation of my products what i would want to sell them for what I the recommended selling price for them would be and um, how much profit they could make of the products if they stock them on consignment so I basically then walked into Tigerberg Animal Hospital Vet Shop um, one of our local ones down the road and funnily enough as I walked into the vet shop the lady who I had previously contacted walked out of her office just as I walked in the store and said I am so sorry I never got back to your message are you here to speak to me about your advent calendars and I said yes I am I've bought them with and I've bought my proposal could I possibly steal some of your time and she was more than happy to speak with me was very impressed by my proposal the products and said she'd be willing to put me in contact with one of the heads of Tigerberg Animal Hospital. So at this point, I was obviously very excited. This was basically the one up after everything that had gone wrong. And I thought like, you know what? I'm finally on the right track. I eventually had the meeting with, basically they were more in the product sector of Tigerberg Animal Hospital, working out what products they would stock in. And they were also very impressed with the product. They were happy to stock it. I had offered to stock them on consignment with the stores and they wanted to stock them at about 10 stores across the Western Cape. So I was so thrilled to say the least and I just couldn't wait to get started. So it was at this stage that I realized I now needed to create display stands for my products if they were going to be stocked in store. I had contacted a company called Action Retail who create point of display stands for stores for different brands and they had obviously given me basically this rough outline of what they could create and I had fitted that into the proposal when I went to Tigerberg Animal Hospital. So it was now time to contact them and get my display stands into production. So this was another expense that obviously came into play. However, it was money well spent because your display stands are very important if you're stocking things in store. You need your product to stand out and that was something I was willing to spend money on. So I basically had a meeting with Action Retail and discussed my products, how many I wanted to stock in the display stand and what they could offer. So once that meeting was complete and the design was finalized, they then went forward with production. Obviously after sending me a quote for approval, but basically they went forward with production. The lead time was now quite short, so I 
quite urgently needed my display stands and my advent calendars to be packed and ready to send to stores. So that was the next step, packaging my advent calendars, getting them stocked in the van and taken off to Tigerberg Animal Hospital with the display stands. It took quite a while and was quite a hectic process to get everything packaged. So I eventually had to hire in some help to assist me in packaging my advent calendars and having them shipped off to Tigerberg Animal Hospital. So this was another obstacle I did not think of, but um, yeah, it was very interesting. I got some help, luckily had um, some people I worked with who also assisted me, so that was amazing. And um, yeah, then I had my advent calendars shipped off to Tigerberg Animal Hospital. And that was during the month of November and December that the stands were up. During this process, I also kept in contact with all of the stores to find out how the calendars were selling and restock them when any of the stands were low. One of the best performing stores was actually very close to me, which was amazing. And I went and stocked up the advent calendars quite regularly for them. Not all of the stores actually performed really well as I did keep in contact with all of them and some of the stores I never actually stocked up at all. So things were getting a little bit tense as I had tons of advent calendars as I said I had about a thousand and the stock wasn't moving quite as fast as I had hoped. One of the things I also forgot to mention is that I gave Tigerberg Animal Hospital exclusivity of my product so I wasn't able to sell my product anywhere else. This was one of my tactics to hopefully get them to obviously stock my product in their stores and they obviously have a lot of feet coming in their stores and their market is dog owners, um, pets and animals so I was willing to take that risk. However, because I had done that I could not sell my advent calendars anywhere else and I had to fully rely on Tigerberg Animal Hospital. However, this was a decision I had made and I had to stick to my commitment. One of the obstacles I faced along the way is that I realized some of the stores had not set up the display stands correctly were either not showcasing them in the rec correct part of the store or not all the products were being showcased on the stand and this is when I realized that when showcasing products in store you need to personally go and visit each store to ensure your products are being displayed correctly and this is something I now understand that people in the retail industry always do and I realized why. So long story short let's get to the results of my sales. So my products actually did not perform anywhere near my hopes and expectations. I sold a total of around 120 advent calendars and a couple key rings and stickers alongside, but nothing too significant. All in all, there's so much I've learned through this process that I'm so appreciative of. There's obviously a lot I would do differently moving forward. I'm still planning on continuing with my advent calendars in 2024. I'm excited to see where this journey takes me. This year I hope to stock my products at an array of different vet shops across the Western Cape and further market my products at a couple local markets. I also hope to push sales through my website and overall increase my brand awareness in 2024. So stay tuned, I will definitely update you on the progress and let's see where this journey takes us.